All right, Lagba Omer day, uh, driving downtown, getting to go to uh, our Lagba Omer party. See, that's Elijah. Here's Elijah, he's driving. So, a couple things. Number one, people were asking, what is the significance of a bonfire? Bonfires have a funny uh, significance or symbolism in Judaism. And uh, the question that's often asked is, why a bonfire on Lagba Omer? What's up with that? So, in short, uh, usually we light a candle on a, on a yard site on the day of a person's passing. Today is the day, the anniversary of the passing of Hashem Bar Yechai. And on such a day, we, sell, we, we commemorate the day by lighting a small candle. It says, Ner Havaya Nishmas Adam, that the soul of man, the soul of mankind, the soul of a person, is like a part of God. And God is like fire. So, to commemorate this, we light a candle in memory of this person. On Rabbi Shem Bar Yechai, on, on, on the day of the passing of Rabbi Shem Bar Yechai, we light a bonfire, not just a small candle, but an entire um, plethora of logs and such. So the question is why? And uh, it's a very interesting an answer that, that I heard is that candles, fire in general, has two properties. It has a property to destroy, a property to consume, a property to uh, annihilate, and then you also have the property of warmth and protection. And actually, if we all know that if we didn't have the warmth of uh, of life uh, around us, whether it's the sun or whether it's uh, you know heating in our homes, we wouldn't survive. We wouldn't be able to survive even a short while. So fire has this property of warming and also the property of, of destroying. The Torah, God God is referred to as fire. That the closer you get to the Torah, the closer, the closer you get to uh, to the mystical side of the Torah, which Rabbi Shem Yachai was a teacher of, you have, uh, you risk becoming burnt, which is why many people ask, you know, how do we learn Kabbalah if you're not allowed to learn Kabbalah before 40? And the simple answer is because the, the original Kabbalah, the way it was established on top of Rabbi, Rabbi Shem Bar Yachai was actually destructive. A person who was not seasoned, a person who did not know the Torah in depth, would learn the Zohar, would learn the Kabbalistic teachings, um, they can go crazy, as many people did go crazy. Many people lost their sanity just by learning these mystical concepts, because it was too much to handle. Yet, we also find that there's a fire that's able to warm, and a fire that's accessible. So, what's interesting is that Torah itself is compared to water. And water is able to become contaminated only by external uh, elements coming into the water. So in order to purify water, what you do is you take, uh, you take fire and you heat up the water and it purifies all the uh, negative things inside the water itself. And uh, when this happens, you're able to have pure water, uh, especially steam, which is the highest form of, of water, uh, which is able to be purified. So the fire which purifies it, there are different types of Torah learning. Just because something is the Torah doesn't mean that it is... It's, uh, it can be done in a nice, in a nice way. That the same, the same way that, that water can become impure by external externalities, so too the Torah can become impure once our personal agenda, once our, um, our self-interests, our egos get in the way. Which is why Judaism many times has to go through a reformation to clean out and to purify all these impurities of negative influences, pagan influences, external influences, and so on. So the fire helps to purify that. The problem is the fire also has destructive property. Fire itself could destroy. Fire itself consumes. So Hasidic teachings were taught in order to take the teachings of Kabbalah and apply them in a way which was understandable, a way which was comp comprehensible, and a way which was not only a, a fire which is able to purify, but also a fire that's able to be warm and embrace. And that's the whole theme of Lagba Omer is to have unity. And unity does not necessarily mean that we all agree. Unity does not necessarily mean that we all get along and we do the same things. And we're allowed to have differences. We're allowed to be Sephardic or Ashkenazic or come from different tribes. The point though is just like an orchestra has many different instruments playing different notes, but together there's harmony and together there's, there's symphony. So too, in our lives, there has to be a respect for the other person. And to understand that another person has their role to play. And in addition to loving, Loving your fellow Jew, respect your fellow Jew. So, I give everyone a blessing. It's a day of blessing.
Today's a day of blessing. I want to bless everyone with a happy, healthy, and um, peaceful Lagva Omer. And it should be a day where we understand the mystical teachings of Torah. We, we, we learn from Rabbi Shimba Yachai, who taught how to have love and respect, and we unify with each other. Tonight we're getting together with um, um, OJO and JNF and Chabad will be joining together at Elijah's house here at 805 North Thornton Avenue. Please join us, 8 p.m. The festivities start. See you tonight.